Shalom and welcome. My name is Abraham Ben Shalom, and I'm going to talk to you guys about something very important here. It's really sad when I see people rip into others, degrade others, and even put each other down, and even try to dog their very intelligence so as to not let people ask questions. And you know, I actually came across a topic recently, and the topic was called The Flat Earth. Is the Earth Flat? You know, when I first heard this topic, my first thought was, wow, that's kind of an interesting thing for people to begin thinking about. And why would people even come up with this idea? What's making them think this way? And so I began looking at a bunch of different videos that people had done and watching the things that people have said. And, you know, the thing that really, really got my attention was there's a lot of people out there that they're really frustrated at all the liars and the people that lie about science and about different many topics and that's why it's so frustrating for people to sit there and say well what is the truth and for many people out there who who like to use scripture to just bash people and just use it as a hammer to slash upon people's heads and make fun of them I just think honestly you what you're doing is wrong and I really don't think you have any concept of understanding what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. And for you guys out there who may be asking this question and you take the Bible very serious, I want to help you understand what I went through. You see, because I actually questioned this issue for the first time in my whole life. And I said, you know what? What is the truth? There's some valid points that people brought up. Some people said, well look, if you go up really high in the sky and you can see the horizon, it's always flat. Or, hey, look, if you do the mathematic geometry of the distance from one point to another, uh, you, you don't see the curvature. Matter of fact, some people would even talk about saying that they've been on naval ships and they've done 30 miles and they would, you know, using the instruments they had, they'd say that I could absolutely see that ship. And this is the kind of stuff that, you know, I look at when I hear people talk. It makes me intrigued to understand what's going on with their thinking and also makes me intrigued to understand what's going on with the world we live in today. And I believe for myself, I believe in the Bible as being the absolute source of authority and for my understanding. And anybody out there who uses the Bible, I would suggest seriously learning Hebrew. And one of the things I'm going to point to is I'm going to actually point out two verses here that are in Hebrew that are translated. And I'm going to absolutely prove to you from a grammatical standpoint and from the scriptural standpoint that the actual earth is round. Now, for people out there who don't like this, I honestly think that the reason why there's a lot of issues that may be very difficult to understand is because maybe the earth is a lot more wider than scientists like to say. And I think there's a lot of things that scientists say that out there that they don't like to tell the truth because they have an agenda. But you know what? The Bible doesn't have an agenda to hurt you. The Bible has only one agenda, and that's to tell you the truth. And so, here's one of the verses I'm going to point out to you. The first one is going to be in Yeshiao, or Isaiah. And it's Isaiah 40, and in verse 22. And in this passage... The Bible reads as such, and I'm going to write it down here. And this is so important because for people who don't know Hebrew, I want to help you understand something that will help you really understand the importance of why you should learn Hebrew and also how we can take the Bible exactly for what it teaches us. This is Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 and it says Hayoshev al Hog Haaretz So, how is it translated? Well, I'm going to tell you how it is to be translated. Ha in Hebrew is a relative pronoun we use on participles or present tense verbs. So this would be translated who. The word Yoshev means sits or dwells. Al 
can mean upon or over. Chug is a very important thing. What is Chug? Chug, and this is how Hebrew works, is a root. And every root has a meaning. That meaning is the function of how that verb or how that noun is going to be understood. The word chug means to encircle or to make a circle. And so literally here this would be a circle. Now the next word haaretz means the earth. Now let me give you something, a little tip here, so you can understand this passage better. Because when we have what's called a noun construct, such as chug and haaretz, chug and haaretz, this is how a noun construct works. If I had the word, for example, etz pri, etz is the word for tree and pri is the word for fruit. Etz is what we want to say is that foundational noun, which means the second verb is going to be describing the first one. So etz pre would little be a tree of fruit. So you might call it a fruit tree, but here we're going to call it a tree of fruit because etz is the foundational noun and the pre is the describer. If I was to say, for example, Pre-ets, then it would be the fruit of a tree. So here, this could be, for example, a pear. Whereas this would definitely not be a pear, but would be the tree, the pear tree, the tree that the pear comes from. So, in order to understand this actual Hebrew noun, this noun construct you literally would have to understand it in this way that the chug which is the circle right so if I was to put chug here and then actually let me put it down here chug circle and then haaretz haaretz okay uh, messed it up. It's supposed to be Haaretz. For everybody out there. So Haaretz, Chug Haaretz, this is going to be the earth, right? So what is the circle? The circle is like the tree. What is the fruit? The fruit is describing the tree. Here the fruit is described by the tree. The tree is described by the fruit. So the Etz, the tree, Pri, fruit. A tree of fruit. The fruit describes the tree. The pre, the fruit here, is described beside the etz. So chug haaretz would be a circle, or the circle because this is definite, the circle of the earth. That's exactly what we get. So here we actually get a circular globe. And this is coming from directly from the passage that's spoken of in here in Isaiah. And this passage is very important. I'll give you another passage here which you can find and this is spoken of in Job and this is spoken of in Job 26 and this is uh, verse 10, okay? And so this is, I want to help you because you know a lot of people mock and a lot of people like to make fun of and a lot of people like to bash and nobody likes to sit there with the right attitude and teach you why it's wrong. You know, anybody can sit there and make fun of somebody. Anybody can. But how many people out there actually want to teach you why it's wrong? And care to care about your feelings and emotions because you're trying to figure something out. I can't stand people that sit there and just mock and laugh and, and giggle because they're foolish. You know what? They don't have the heart to sit there and try to help somebody know why something is actually true according to the scriptures and letting the scriptures teach the truth of these very things.
So let me give you another passage here. This is Job, this is chapter 26, and this is going to be verse 10. So Job 26, verse 10. And what does Job 26, verse 10 say? Here it says, Hok, Chag, Al Penei, Mine. This passage here in Job, we know in the Torah that the lower water is called Mine. Okay? Here in this passage of Yov, Hulk in the Hebrew word is referring to something that's intangible. It's it's like if I use the word gavul, for example, I would have an I would have a tangible idea of a border. Because the word gavul is the word for border, and I can give you tangible things to understand the border. However, a hook is something you cannot physically tangibilize. It's like, for example, a rule. Uh, the word hook also is given, for example, as a rule or an edict. It's something that's intangible, but it gives you a specific guideline. Okay? So, hook, if we look at here, um, it has to do with bound. A bound. A hook is a bound, something that gives you a limit, okay, or a set limit. Hook, chag. Chag, this is coming from the verb chug, which we have here, okay? Uh, this is in a, um, a participle form. So, a circling bound is over or upon the face of water. Now you can't say the water because there's no ha here. You'd have to have ha mine in order to be the water. Here it's water. Now normally you see Bible translations will say water, the water, but uh, you can't do that literally because it doesn't have the hey uh, article. So a bound encircles upon the face of water. A bound, what is this? It's a bound, it's a set limit. The Bible is talking about the issue of the fact of what is the set limit? It's referring to our universe, and, and we're going to see this here, because as we finish going on, it says odd as far as, and the next word is tehil. Uh, Tachlit, which is the completion. Uh, it comes from the verb kala, which means to complete. And then you have the word or, um, im choshech. So the Torah says here, the hook, a bound, is encircling. Hog, remember, means come from the word encircle. Al, upon and over, the face, the surface of, mine, of water. Ad, as far as tachlit, uh, a completion of light with darkness. And this tells us about the universe and how the earth when it comes to light, that light has a certain limit by which it stops and then darkness uh, cannot no longer be penetrated by the light. The light stays at a fixed place, just like darkness has a fixed place by which light cannot come. So when we think about this, we can look at this as like, for example, the sunrise and the sun setting, how one part of the earth, which we have, which is filled with light, and then the other part of the earth, which is filled with darkness, and we find that the separation, this is that separation that Yoga is talking about. And, you know, I, I want to really encourage people out there that they're pursuing to understand if you really want the scriptures to be the source of everything that you believe in, then by all means, this is how we have to go about it. We have to learn the truth, we have to understand the truth, and we have to accept the things that are given. But don't put people down because of where they stand and what they don't understand. 
you know, I never learn anything from people like that. And I don't think anybody ever learns anything. And you know, people may not like it because they have dispositions about where they stand. But you know, this is not how we're supposed to live. And this isn't what God teaches us. God tells us that we're supposed to learn things, you know, that is in a nice comfort area where you can see and ask and look in scriptures and find the answers. I hope this helps. And I hope this encourages you. And uh, I, I hope that if you want to learn Hebrew, please go to yadrama.com and teach Hebrew for free. Uh, it's yadrama.wordpress.com. I'll see you later.